my name is John Kirk. I'll be your moderator this morning. My name, I'm a pop culture writer with popmythology.com, Trent Croy, and Back Issue Magazine. Uh, and I'm really excited to bring out this morning's guest. Um, he's an actor with a prolific film history under his belt, and he's a true son of anarchy. Ladies and gentlemen, Chips himself, Tommy Flanagan. friend who got you started. Um, that would be Robert Carlyle, am I correct? Correct. Okay, I've done my homework, folks. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, a long time ago, way back, beyond. Um, yeah, Robert Carlyle, you might know Bobby from like, Trace Martin to I think in that show, what a fantastic actor. And he was like a childhood friend almost. And uh, I was DJing and then I got the opportunity to join the steel company and uh, boom! Here we are. We're on. <laughs> so then you made it to Gladiator and you landed the role of Cicero. And can you take us through that process? What was that experience like working on that movie? That was amazing. Well, I, just, uh, well, I flew to Malta and I remember the first day I walked onto the set, and it was these huge, massive arenas, coliseums, and it was just amazing. Like, like a whole caravan of every animal you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And that was my first day. And I it was, a, it was a fantastic experience. I had a chance to go to Rome last July and see Gladiator with a live orchestra with Russell. And I couldn't fucking go. <laughs> I was so pissed. <laughs> Working. Ugh. Anyway. So you've got um, all these great roles in your history that have had a hardcore, dramatic type of intensity to them. Is there a common feature that you look for when you approach a role? Insanity. There's lots of insanity in it. I kind of dig insanity. Yeah. No, uh, I don't know. I, um, whatever comes across the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll take any challenge, basically. Any challenge? Any challenge. Is there a favorite genre that you look for? Or? Uh, in truth, I think. Anything if you speak the truth. Oh. But, um, not in a particular genre, I would say. I mean, I do love Westlers. Who doesn't like the Westlers? <laughs> comedy. I'd love to do a comedy. I don't know a comedy. I'd like to see that. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Two nuns walk out of the apartment. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm from Scotland, too, and... Uh, oh, I feel my accent. No, it's, it's still, just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, people from Scotland, you know, they said, just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> but my family's always had, like, this huge flair for historical dramas, and growing up with my mom, she was born in Sucky Hall Street. And uh, oh, she's she a toughie. toughie. Yeah, she was a toughie. And I she... Was like in Scotland, so I was Sucky Hall Street, really? Wow, jeez. Yeah. Well, wow. anyway... <laughs> My mum was uh, like really, really uh, big into the patriotic films, and you were in Braveheart. So how did that feel? Like, was there like any family pride? Was there any story? Are you kidding me? It's amazing. <laughs> I was, uh, I was in Rain Dog Theatre Company, and they were in town casting. I'd done maybe a couple of little appearances on TV, and then I hear Mel Gibson's in town, uh, Braveheart. That's a call casting director wants to see you. I'm like, fucking great. <laughs> so I went off to this hotel and I walk in and she's like, oh, thank God, at last. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I mean, I've only been on stage a few times and I don't really know nothing about my acting. And all of a sudden I'm in this room and we're sitting on the floor smoking cigarettes and she's telling me all about the movie. And then I meet Mel, and then I'm up in the Highlands, 
And it was supposed to be just for two weeks. And it turned into six fucking months, or five and a half months. <laughs> it was just amazing. The whole experience was incredible. And uh, just being thrown onto like huge films here. It was fucking terrifying. Okay, Tommy, just walk up to this mark, stop, and look sad. <laughs> <laughs> But Mel Gibson expanded the role for you too, didn't he? Because he was so impressed. He did, yeah. I was, I say, I was listening. I was supposed to go for two weeks, and uh, and me and Mel kind of had it all. He just kept me on one of that magnificent seven. So it was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. That's amazing. He's incredible. The man's a genius. Yeah. Yeah. He's so much fun to work with. Like any downtime, there's always some guy who you know, like you fall asleep in your chair and somebody will tie you to it and, <laughs> or gaffer tape you or whatever. Just mad shit like that work all the time. And then it was back to work. Right. And then five Oscars. It was five, I think it was six. It was like five years. And there you go. <laughs> it's all to me. I got that. You've got to have some great stories. Like, you work with really cool guys on Sunset America. You've got, you know, Ron, who was here yesterday. Honey boy. You couldn't make it, but uh, Ryan. But, okay, you've got to have some great anecdotes or stories working with them. What, what sort of hijinks and trouble did you get into? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The book will be out next year. <laughs> it's a Lars book. <laughs> oh, my God. We have to begin. Anecdotes from the boys. I mean, it was the whole thing was a fucking anecdote, to be honest. I mean, you get up in the morning, you ride to work, you get to hang out with the boys all day, and you ride motorcycles, and you laugh your ass off all day, and you do the work, and then you hang around in the evening, and you know, what are you doing? We feel too old. And uh, then you ride home. <laughs> And all the stuff that happened in between. Right? What's your best memory of working on Sons of Anarchy? Riding with Charlie and Moon and DL through the, the California hills in Northern California. Sun was going down, we were on the bikes, just finished a huge day. And just the light across the canyons. I can see now, man, it was just the most beautiful day. And the boys were all in front of me. It was. Uh, yeah, that was a kind of spectacular moment. Oh, no. I was like, there's America. Fuck it, I was beautiful. Oh, oh, was easy writer shit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> what is it about Chips that you think uh, is, is your favorite part of him? Playing him? <laughs> I don't know. Um, like you mentioned him speaking to truth. How does he speak to truth? I think Chips was a kind of way he was a bit of a moral compass. Yeah. I think, you know, I mean he was a bad bastard, he don't fuck them, but, <laughs> but he was totally loyal and had a to go and, you know, to him that was his family. See my character was actually based on a real guy who joined a certain club. He left Ireland when he was fifteen and then um, got to San Francisco and joined this you know, this club. And uh, he prospected, and now he's a fully cashed in member. And his story is kind of, um, my, my life is based on, my story, Chips' story is based on his life. So, that was a tall head of it, didn't I? I lost it, I don't know. Baby, I thought it was the one thing, and I was talking about Well, that's fine, wherever you want to go. <laughs> it's all great to us. Can we get what we smoke in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Canada. <laughs> I was here uh, last fall through to December doing a new show for Netflix. It's called uh, Woo Assassins. We shot it in Vancouver. And it was legalized while I was here. I was very honored to be part of that. <laughs> and the show is pretty damn good as well. So. But speaking to, how does Chip speak to truth? That's where we go with that. Chips speaks to truth. Right. <laughs> give, me, give, me, give me something else. Is it, okay, if, if there's a performer. Give me a run in if, uh, if Chips is placed in a situation where he has to be a moral compass, how do you think he would approach that? Well, 
He's got to steal a loaf of bread to feed a starving family. Oh, you could eat that one, I'll be. No dangerous, that's not. Is it, is it a character that you sort of like use, um, if, if there's a performer who inspires you, who would it be? I, I'm i not really inspired by performers. I mean, I, I, I love to see some good work. But most of my life is is from characters I've met, and people I've met and grew up with, and we may have been day. They inspire me, because, you know, you know, because that's real life, that's the truth. So that inspires me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like to watch good actors, don't get me wrong, I like to see a good performance, but I don't want to see a shit one. But yeah, so. Yeah. All right. Well, at this point, I think we've got some people that are eager. I can see the faces. Look at them. They're just like, let's ask that question. <laughs> so let's turn it over to the audience at this point and see the question. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Probably my favorite episode to work on. Um, I don't know. The rock for me bad. <laughs> my favorite. I think anything that was to do with. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of one. Honestly, I might think of so many great ones. Um, you no. Know, Uh, I don't know. Well, let's come back to that one, yeah. <laughs> I think there was a question right there, too. Who wants to ask? That's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are assassins? So, you know, we need like show, 90% Asian cast, me and Catherine, whatever. And, uh, Sort of a Chinese mythology, and it's a hell of a good thing. I can't tell you too much right now, but uh, we should be at uh, San Diego Comic Con and then um, announce it there, and then we'll be out in July. But it has an incredible cast, an incredible cast of directors. Yeah, John Worth is the showrunner, damn fine man. So, yeah, I just cause to love it. And get rid of the fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I turn around, they're there. <laughs> Signing on the ground chest, and I turn around, there's Carolyn. Yeah, that's right. Last week, it was somebody else. And last week, some nana at me. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a bond of a friendship that I don't see ever breaking. And that's for life, man. Apart from course, I hate that bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually a family friend of ours. I love him. I mean, I, I, I can't wait for the day for me and Cozy to work again together. Uh, I, 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 actually, you know what? That's my favorite scene, is working with that fucker. Dang. I just love working with him. It, just, it was one of those constant crack ups. Yeah. And you're trying to keep your face straight, and he's off camera. Fucking do <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he's doing, and you're trying to pour your heart out in some fucking emotional scene, and there's a coach, fucking stinking on him, doing something. <laughs> and then the, the camera would be on him, and then your mind would be fucking him. So I love those moments. I love that. And Boone as well. Boone was always. Uh, he was always up for a giggle. But, uh, and, and of course, David LaBrava, aka Liftoff. We call them. <laughs> yes. Oh, isn't it? No, no, it's, it's, it's sad, it's good acting, but the ending, 
trying to just run with whatever is in your hands. I don't know if it's a rock, it's an axe, it's a sword, it's a whatever. It's just, I need a moment. <laughs> stage, uh, down in Laurel Canyon, North Hollywood, a lot of the cast hung out for a minute, it was way into the early hours in the morning, the sun was starting to come up, which is me, Charlie, Boone, and DL was left, it's not me. We just said goodbye, and uh, then we rode home, and that had my I got my full face helmet, my earbuds, and this song came on on the shuffle of my playlist. And I have to admit, there's a, a couple of tears inside that helmet that night. Yeah, that was it. Uh, yeah. It was, uh, it was a good ride with those guys. And, um, yeah, it was quite an experience. You should be there. Fucking marvelous. I think that show was on the screen. You know what I mean? I don't think that show would have worked if I hadn't been for that bond between the guys and the girls. I mean, Mike said, she's just epic. Um, you know, Kay and all that. Oh yeah, everybody on that show. It was great. Just such a cool formula. Just the right people in the right place at the right time. As Jimmy Smith says, it's the light in the bottle. It only happens now and again. And it's very doubtful if we'll see a show like that again. I'm not thinking. They just don't make that kind of stuff anymore. I can't believe I'm that age now I can see that. It's like <laughs> silent movies. Don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> it's not a silent one, Perlman. Oh, Ronnie! You've infected me. <laughs>
last thing with Charlie on the roof, just before the plan is out. Very powerful. It was beautiful. It was a fantastic scene. I really enjoyed that. Uh, and you're right, it was like a bottle. You guys were all great. I thought it was great writing. It was one of those, it's one of those shows that I started watching the first episode and I kind of like, I don't quite get it yet. And I rock. That's because neither did we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took about three episodes and then I was done. I was next seven. Could three. be a season. Yeah. I wonder, do you still rock? I do, yeah. I, I, but you know, it's so crazy writing these days. Everyone's on a fucking device. We're all guilty. And I, I just got my club and snapped a year and a half ago. Two years ago, I was fil filming Gardens of the Galaxy and I had a break. And I went back to California, so I'm riding along the PCH. And someone was texting and pushed me to the side of the road. And I braked, sand, flat in the car. Oh, wow. And then I had to go back and float through space. That was comfortable. So I didn't tell James Gunn I'd go back with this big steel plate. Oh, cool. And after he said, you should told me, you should told me. <laughs> anyway, I was supposed to be riding my bike. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do it all the time. That's my, my little weekly ritual. Up in the morning, take my dog to school, jump on the bike. Buddy, meet my buddy, he's got a bike, so I'm back in his car, and then we had a Will Rogers trail along, Santa Monica Pier, Arena Del Rey, on Main Street, down there, and I'm like, yeah, it's fun. Oh, yeah, that was my exercise. It's not amazing. A couple of questions over there. My little Scottish thing. Easy one. I don't like St. Plastic's Day. I mean, you know, happy St. Patrick's Day, but it's really just St. Plastic's Day. I just have no time for it. Plus, I don't drink anymore, so. No. It's definitely boring now. Because no one gives a shit in Ireland. I mean, you know, go to mass or something, but it's just a piss up, isn't it? <laughs> we don't drink, and who gives a monkey's? I can't remember. <laughs> 20 years ago. Uh, it was bizarre. The only live thing in the room, everything was green screen. The only live thing was the water I was standing in. Everything else around you was green. So it was kind of weird. First time for me. Back then when it was new. Yeah, yeah it was uh, fun. Enjoyed it. It was a good role. Yeah, I didn't, I, when I saw the special effects on the green screen later, I'm like, there's no, I thought it was all set, but I had no, no idea. No, there was not, like I said, everything was green screen, every single thing. That was the first time it really done something at that scale. Like, yeah, it was, was, yeah. Yeah, because um, Robert Rodriguez, he, it's his studio down in Austin, Texas. Yeah, he was a kind of, yeah. Don't go skydiving. Apart from Ryan Hurst. That fucker jumps out of planes, do you believe that? He got the whole cast to jump out of a plane. I don't know how he managed to convince us to all jump out of a perfectly good fucking plane. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, it was a lot of vodka for me. But, uh, yeah, we all, he said, let's all go skydiving. And we all went and did it. Apart from Bobby, he couldn't, uh, he was a little too, um, I never said that. <laughs> that was fun. I <laughs> saw, so, yeah, I forget. What was the question? Oh, contracts, yeah, so you can't do the most What's the craziest thing that they put in the project? Normally, 
Only it's no more Tommy Flanagan, but <laughs> <laughs> stay ten feet away all the time. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. My my contract is nothing too strange. You know, just three M and M's. The usual stuff, you know. Yes. Six weeks in Scotland and four months in Dublin. Fuck me, did we drink a lot? <laughs> there was one bar in the Highlands of Scotland that me and James, you know James Cosmo? Jimmy Cosmo, beautiful human being. There was a bar and it was probably what? 50 meters long. We'll see any of you have a See that, eh? <laughs> 50 meters long and it's all spot, different kinds of scotch, or whiskey as we call it in Scotland. Always then, at the, the, at the very end is a 200 year old bottle of scotch, whiskey as we call it in Scotland. <laughs> and the thing is you have to get from this end of the table to that end of the table and then drink a shot from every single bottle and then you win the 200 year old bottle. The amount of nights that me and James Cosmo started there Started wobbling here, <laughs> buckled here, and collapsed there. <laughs> so you couldn't get close to the fucking thing. Never got it. We would try to split it. We made a deal. Can we split it? <laughs> nah. Can we? I'm tired. Yes. You may have had a few in there, but Mel was not. Yeah, he may have, he may have popped in. As Mel does that kind of thing, he doesn't drink, but in Glasgow as well, he'll just pop in the pubs and see and hang out with some of the boys and girls and have a laugh and then leave. There's all these stories in Glasgow as well, people I know that Mel will just pop in and, hey, how you doing? What's up? Ah. And then, uh, he told me, yeah, look at that stupid joke you had in the pub. I said, uh, hey Tommy, I know this, I heard this Glasgow joke. Am I, are you a donor? I'm a rang. You have to be Glasgow accent. But a rang means wrong. I'm a rang. It was a Mel Gibson show. This is bad when he did it. This is bad I'm doing it. I wasn't trying to do it for laughs. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's what he did. He said, feel good. Yes. Hello there. Marvelous. John Toll, yeah. Film and like map boxes, 
cameras and beautiful locations to blow your mind. And then you're walking on a green screen and But film is definitely what I, I love to do because you can collaborate more. The te like television series is, is the format, and at the end of the day, you have, it's a product. You have to get that product out. And it's still fun doing it. You keep it as truthful and the best you can, obviously. But uh, film, you have that freedom to do you are, which is your job as an actor. So, yeah. Yeah. The TV's great, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good shit going on on TV at the moment, a hell of a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I wish I get involved in some of that good stuff in a minute. Remember, I can't tell you. Yeah, I didn't say that. Anyway, it's all good. Oh, thank you. Now we've been shot one more time. Let me get this guy, he's another question. Would you hand up over there, Tom? Yeah, did you enjoy uh, riding motorcycles in the show? Did I enjoy it? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Gravel uh, scars on my ass, <laughs> a couple of steel plates here and there. But uh, yeah, a lot of fun. But that David LaBrava, he's in a, a club. And, and um, he would uh, make us ride parallel. Well, he tried to make us do this. He like side by side on the freeway and the, and the outside lane and keep 90 miles an hour all the times and how the tires nine inches apart because that's the way this club rides and huge big lines and so we would start trying to do that <laughs> I don't know so <laughs> <laughs> I like fuck this <laughs> I'll blow your two plates <laughs> yeah lovely place yes Try and show love and um, don't hate. Uh, but career wise, fuck, don't get much that one. We all need a 200 bottle, 200 year old bottle of stuff. That would help. I mean, if this whole room went, we couldn't fucking make it. <laughs> GLS, uh, BMW K60 GLS, best bike in the world. 
number one road bike is fucking beautiful, but I killed it this last crash. It's just one. And it was, uh, put my heart up, but anyway, I'll get another one. But my wife, she's like, she said, okay, that's it, your third strike, you're done on motorcycles. My daughter was seven on Tuesday. Does it hurt? So, thank you, my love. So, uh, that's it. No more bikes. Because the collarbone was sticking out and stuff. So, so that was kind of the nail in the bottom for me on riding bikes. But, uh, like I say, three strikes. And then she knows about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. You know what? Coaching used to always bring his little Prius or whatever the hell he was driving <laughs> to the set. Coach is a cool guy, but stepping out his Prius with his Crocs on. He's going to hate me for saying that. <laughs> with his Crocs on. And his little specs. You know those ones that flip in the middle when you're watching his specs? Oh, you're, li you're really living this lucky roll, aren't you? <laughs> That's the genius of quotes, you know, he's, I, I love working with him, man, I really do. It's funny because we, we, we did a movie together in um, Bulgaria, me, him and Norman Reedus, and uh, I fucking couldn't stand him, I thought this guy's an asshole. <laughs> but I was so drunk then, not me and Norman were just, you know, just Bulgaria, 20, 15 years ago, whatever, just drinking like fucking idiots, and um, I thought Kikosi was just a fucking ass. But then, by the end of the shoot, I, kind of, I was warming to him. And I knew about Sons of Anarchy because my friend John Linson was the original creator of the whole show. He's the guy who hired Cup Sutter. So I knew about the show and I said to Kikosi, listen, I'm starting this new show. Call your people, get on it, motorcycle show. And then a couple of weeks later, Kikosi comes walking on the set and I was like, <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> and then, I think you can see in the first season, we kind of, we don't like each other. And I think that was partially true in some way. But then it just turned out, and I just love the guy. He's just this chill one day. He's, he's so, he can be so abrasive and sweet at the same time, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But it's just wonderful to watch sometimes. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's the best. He's a, a really proud proponent to supporting um, children with cancer. He's yeah, oh, I know. Big part of that. Yeah. He's that, and his two daughters are just beautiful humans, and his wife, beautiful. They're just good people. It's great to be I think we've got time for just two more questions. put those tits on, that was it. Yeah, Goggins was gone. Goggins was out of the building. And then, Jeff Harvey got He was, he's an incredible actor. He really is, he does not mess about. And he stays in character the whole time. Yeah. Bill Pullman was another guy, funnily enough. Uh, I worked with Bill Pullman on a movie called The Ballad of Letty Brown. Me and Bill Pullman, Jim Caviezel, Kathy Baker, beautiful, it's a beautiful movie. Peter Fonda, bless his heart. Peter Fonda, 50 year anniversary of Easy Rider. <laughs> anyway, um, Bill Pullman. Where was I? <laughs> oh, Goggins. Bill Pullman. Bill Pullman, yeah. We did this Western together, and he, I, I was, when I first walked on the set, he was playing this left, this old sidekick guy, and, uh, for the whole fucking movie, I thought, this is a real problem. Like, no, totally, because you know, he'd he have it up when he was on camera. But the night he rapped at six o'clock in the morning, suddenly Bill Pullman walks up, and I'm like, and it's Bill Pullman, and he's not like this fucking lefty guy. Completely different guy. Staying character the whole time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think we have time for one last question. Do you have a bucket list and then so much on? The bucket list? Oh, things you do in life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My daughter, number one, make sure that lady was one of the best. I got one because she's like Canada. Just hopefully 
you there's a fucking future. It's hard, I don't know, it's hard to, to look forward to them for me personally. Uh, personally, for the human race, for Christ's sake. Um, I don't know. I hate being the, the glass half empty guy. I really hate that. Because I'm not, and right now it's really fucking hard not to. Every time you pull up, pick up a device, and stick on a screen, it's just more and more and more. And I don't know. It's just fucking weird on me. I don't know what he's on at all. I know that. So. I don't know. Well, peace and love, baby! <laughs> And on that, I think uh, that's our time for this morning, folks. Thanks for coming out. Thank you very much. Sharad, Tommy, Tommy Flanagan.